Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is Glenn Roberts, and I am the director of the U.S. Department of Commerce office here in Fresno. I work for an agency called the International Trade Administration, and our main focus is to help U.S. exporters and U.S. companies to export their products to new global marketplaces around. We are going to discuss today um, some e-commerce, and it's kind of funny to talk about today because I think most of us are so experienced with e-commerce uh, because now we're purchasing so much online nowadays, and so your Amazons and eBay and, and things like this. But uh, for business, there's a couple of other different strategies that we're going to cover today. But before we get started, I'd like to find out who I am presenting to. So I'd like to know if you guys could type in uh, for a response uh, what industries you serve and, um, and if you just build applications, I'd like to know that as well. So I'll give you just a, a minute or two uh, to type in responses so I can take a quick look at them. And, uh, well, I'm going to try to gear the presentation towards um, a little bit of everything so we can cover some ground. But first of all, let's change the slide. We got one that's Daniel Malcolm from Sparkle Times. Uh -huh. and, and, yeah, and they the do. Industry there. What industry? He hasn't said it. Okay. Yeah, and just any time if you can pop in your industries uh, and let me know what you're serving. Is it agribusiness? Is it water? Is it energy? Are you just building apps? Fashion yeah. industry. Fashion industry. Excellent. Okay, good. Good, good, good. So retail and everything else. Good. All right. So um, if you're in the uh, fashion industry, you probably understand the retail. But let's go over some quick definitions. Uh, E-commerce e in of itself is the um, sales channel that crosses all industries and, and uh, sells and promote brand awareness online. And uh, it's a part of the digital strategy. In today's world, we're seeing more and more of that and generations way behind us. Obviously, we're just going to be totally immersed in it. And of course, um, where would you go in your business without a business plan or a strategy? We also need to have a good digital strategy. And also, uh, the digital transformation is already upon us, but um, some people and some companies need to get uh, a little bit more involved with e-commerce. You have your online metrics that you want to be able to evaluate, analyze, and then hopefully uh, you'll be able to find out what direction and where your return on investment is. So you can focus on the areas that bring the most amount of return for your efforts. We use in the Department of Commerce, we set up a lot of business to business matchmaking. And so in e-commerce, you have a lot of business to business as well. Now, if you sell directly to the consumer, maybe uh, people who are in the fashion industry can now sell directly to the consumer. That would be a business to consumer. But what about business to government, B2G? I mean, the government is looking to procure services through the Government Services Administration. And so GSA can help you provide that. We can go into that a little bit later on. But yeah, think about business to business, business to consumer, and then business to government. Right? Next page, please. All right, so we have two types of processes online, if you will. We have uh, the transactional marketplace. On, on your left, you'll see that and how it flows. But then again, some of us that are out there in, in the business world, we're developing new products or services or uh, anything in particular that uh, you need to get the information. You want to begin the process of informing. So. There's a little bit of um, a process to change just to make it informational. But at the same time, let's go ahead and couple that shopping cart on there in case you do have something that is ready for sale and, and we might be able to pick up some additional sales. But most of us are looking for information first before we buy. And so we should always have a very prominent uh, information landing page so they can grab all the information that is necessary. Okay. And any of those industries that showed up? Mm -hmm. Take a look at it. It doesn't look like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next page, please. All right. Um, in, in the manufacturing world, um, out here in, in Fresno, there's quite a few manufacturers that are getting into the space. So, manufacturers then would sell to distributors and wholesalers. Our agency helps find distributors 
or sales representatives for your products in overseas marketplaces. We do that by um, enlisting our U.S. embassies and consulates around the world to assist us. So you have um, the U.S. government in foreign countries through the embassies and consulates that can help us find distributors and sales representatives for your um, products. So, uh, and, then, and then we want to move uh, through the cycle, uh, the wholesale cycle into enterprise or retail business, and then eventually into consumer. But, you know, keep in mind that sometimes there's three or four um, exchanges of the product before it gets into the, the consumer's hand or even the retailer's hand. Uh, so so uh, we, we also help companies to try to price their products in particular marketplaces by reverse engineering what the price is, what the duties are, uh, what are the transactional costs, the financial costs, and see if you can deliver and be competitive in a foreign country. And so the B2B in business actually uh, reduces the amount of cost to serve clients and then moving them into an online self-service e-commerce environment. Well, that's great, and that certainly saves a lot of um, labor costs, and that allows us to be competitive. So let's go to the next slide. So what we've done, you'll see here, uh, we have online sales industries and reports of numbers and the, and the years of uh, growth, and you can see that uh, we've covered a lot of different industries, but I was informed that maybe there'll be some app developers online. So I wanted to, to go over some additional information about the apps as we guys go over these numbers. The global mobile app revenues for 2016, again, the global mobile app revenues for 2018 were $88 million. Okay, that's quite a bit. And that's globally speaking. Now, the forecast for the same global mobile app revenues uh, for 2020 are projected to be $189 billion. That's, that's a lot of people coming into the space in a short amount of time. So again, we're kind of here to help you get ready. And again, once you post your website online, it's, it's available around the globe. And that's why they call it World Wide Web, right? So uh, another one too is um, uh, the uh, worldwide uh, in-app purchases. And the revenues from that 2017 were at $37 billion. So that, that, that's kind of promising too, and, and that provides a support uh, you know, for, for your company, and, and especially if they can purchase right within the app, and that makes a big difference. US mobile app advertising revenues for 2017 clocked in at $35 billion. So that, that's quite a bit that's going on there. And then the uh, global mobile app revenue between 2013 and 2017 grew at 61.3%. Now, I got those sources from uh, Business of Apps, it's online service, and didn't cost anything to get the information, um, and I thought it was pretty good. Now, uh, the top grossing uh, Apple app in 2017, if anybody can type in a guess here, uh, we'll, we'll find a way to, to get you some sort of perk, but if you got a guess, I'll give you about another five seconds to throw any, any kind of information up there. But again, the, the top grossing Apple app for 2017, Pokemon Go, right? <laughs> At over $2 billion, phenomenal. Just love it, love it, okay, next page. All right. Uh, most most companies uh, don't know they're already selling through B2B e-commerce, but you know the wholesale distribution cycles are going through this now. Uh, I'm starting to see a lot of engineering firms that can uh, take place as well. So as they, the, the client and the engineer work out the specifications, the transactional part now is being taken is taking place online. So that's fantastic to see. And then also, all the way to the retail end, um, Square D is offering very easy setup to, to, to take, um, take your payment with your mobile device, which is, I think it's just amazing today that we can do all this and uh, it's really moving in the, in the right direction. So uh, manufacturers command uh, quite a bit of e-commerce sales, of course, a lot of growth in there, and we, we, uh, we are here to help them out. 
distributors are going to take a little bit less. It's just the nature of the business uh, because they have just less involved. They're not they're not developing and or um, or coming up with new products, right? Uh, but so that space is is uh, is quite large now. And at thirty-four billion dollars in two thousand fifteen, it's it's a nice increase. Uh, retailers are right behind there, and then the wholesalers are are behind about four billion. Now, as you can see with this list here, the top manufacturers with the B two B web sales, uh, you notice that there's quite a few energy companies in that space, uh, from Valero to um, Philips sixty six and Chevron and Mobile. Those are some very big companies, and that. That uh, space and e-commerce is being fulfilled um, quite quickly. Now you can also see that there are uh, Apple and Dell and Hewlett Packard are in there as well, and that would be um, I mean I bought my my Dell computers and Apple computers directly online, and then you know I haven't shifted the door. No use going to the store nowadays, right? <laughs> Just to answer some questions. But uh, the promising thing is that it's really taking off and. It's going to grow every year, and again, the projections uh, for 2020 just look phenomenal. Let's go to the next page so they can see a pie chart. All right, so there's the um, uh, transportation equipment manufacturing space taking up a big number, right? And uh, the rest are kind of following behind. But again, like with energy, as you can see down at the bottom, chemical manufacturing takes up a significant amount of place uh, space as well. And uh, machinery manufacturing, that's the guys who are manufacturing equipment for manufacturing other things. We have a lot of that here in Fresno in the, in the food uh, processing space. So we have companies that build these extremely high efficient uh, production lines to process foods. And we ship that equipment all around the world. So it's really nice to see. Uh, we've broken out some. If you have any questions on that, that would be great. Just go ahead and type them in there. All right, let's go to the next channel and next slide and talk about the channels. All right, uh, your website, uh, you own that data, you've designed it, you have full uh, control on your content and pricing, and um, it will require some service providers to help you out with it. Other people are having success uh, in selling their products through social media and Cite a few different examples on that, but I I monitor I see it every day, and it amazes me on some of these products that are going. I personally look for new cutting edge uh, products, so we can maybe help them get into new marketplaces. So I'm always constant constant looking at social media for, for new ideas and new products that are coming along, so we can help them uh, expand their revenues by going overseas. But uh, through social media, you build your brand. And then you connect directly with the consumers. This is a great place to offer that informational um, page to well. And then um, you want to promote other things to your 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 social consciousness and 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 how you're going to uh, you know move into doing the right things for the planet, um, sustainability if, if that's in your space. You really want to try to capitalize on all that information. Okay. And then on the online marketplaces, uh, this is this is your your Amazon, your Ebay's, your Etsy's, and quite a few different ones that are out there, of course. But this is the way to reach a lot of consumers in a hurry. Amazon provides a, a great service, and you can see how successful they have been to provide that soft landing for small companies to have all that information, analytics, uh, the shopping cart, uh, the payment methods, all coupled together. Ready for you to take? Yes, you pay for it, but um, it certainly makes it easier for a small business owner to, to take advantage of that. Now um, you're kind of losing and giving up some of the data, um, and, and and there's a lot of competition in that space. Uh, my gosh, I, I hope I hope you're not trying to compete with uh, used to cell phones or something to this effect because there's just a massive amount of competition out there for such products. But uh, it happens, and and. Uh, but then uh, if we move on to the, the bottom uh, right quadrant there, sell to third parties and country distributors. This is a place uh, that we help companies get into. They have a market share already. They have a brand presence already in country. You can quickly and cheaply establish your, your brand there and be able to offer immediate purchase of your products. And, and again, we can help out to make sure 
that your 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 products are being competitively priced in the marketplace. Now, sometimes through the sales channels, um, we, we may bypass a lot of brokers, and therefore we should be able to sell a little bit cheaper because there's less people taking the profit off the top or their, or their expense, if you will. So we have an opportunity here to maybe enter into a market that's very competitive, but you don't want to be too low either because if you can gain an extra 5% in your profit margin by pricing your product accordingly, then you can make a little extra money. And we see that in, in, in the commodities business here uh, with, with nuts and, and, and different products like this going out the door. Sometimes our farming operations, um, they're, 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 their family members are getting global MBA degrees and they realize that they can try to sell directly to the retailer. It's difficult. It's not easy. It takes years to, to get everything lined up. But it's happening and it's a, probably a trend that's going to keep growing just like everything involved with e-commerce. So that really takes, uh, takes place. Um, we also, the um, having a, a third-party in-country distributor, but also help boost your um, uh, your your, your um, website optimization, if you will, because they'll be referring back to uh, your website for information before they purchase in country locally. But uh, at least between you and the distributor, you're making one sale, and then your distributor takes the multiple sales, and and so that makes it easier. But you still have to provide information and all that kind of good stuff. The margins are a little bit smaller, but then it gets a lot easier. And you're getting you're collecting one payment instead of a multitude of payments. So uh, these are just some of the big differences, but the US Commercial Service, again, that's the US Department of Commerce Agency that I work for. This is something that we can help you find. And, and uh, small companies, it's less than a thousand dollars to find a qualified distributor in any in any country that we serve. Uh, and they're they're qualified, they're vetted. And the appointments are, are pre-made for you. So you, when you fly in the country to meet with these people, to see how they're going to represent your product, to see if you, you can work with them. This is this is exactly the space and uh, the, the opportunity for you to really find the right type of partner. So on average, it's about four to six different distributors are brought to the table for you on that uh, special service. We call it a gold key. It's such a nice service to get into countries and, and we're busy with, with providing those gold key services uh, on a regular basis. But again, it is for like a third party in-country dis distributor. We have other products here in, in the Fresno area in California that deal with irrigation. So we some of those folks would like to have the smaller componentry of irrigation or for distributors. And some of the bigger stuff is a more of a sales rep and we can help find a sales rep to do the same gold key service. So I hope that's uh, some good information there. But go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, so this is some of the information that we've gone over, and uh, you'll see that uh, the, uh, the you'll need to work with your distributor to provide the online descriptive content to be used in product description. Now, that's translation of your product. Sometimes idioms just do not translate very well. So we really want to make sure that uh, we have a good partner for you that really understands in depth, has a good command of the English language, and is able to translate the nuances of your product uh, into local language, and that way it'll it'll help optimize that, that search engine uh, optimization for whatever products you might be looking for. All right, uh, we do offer an international partner search. It's the same as the Gold Key, except for we don't set appointments. We give you a list of, of, of potential distributors, but it, but it also comes with a price because it's specifically tailored for your company. And um, but uh, the Gold Key matchmaking service is our flagship service, and we've seen nothing but positive results. Out of uh, 18 years working with the, the department, I've only had one service that did not go well, and that money was refunded from the government back to our client in, in, in two weeks. So I thought that was amazing. They don't want to take your money if they can't provide the service. So I, we've been very successful with this service over the years. Next slide. All right, um, as you decide to move into the global um, realm and you're starting to think about maybe I should go ahead and set up a distributor overseas, that way I'm not doing one or two shipments a month that are international, I can maybe send it to a distributor. Again, we talked about some of the pros and cons, um, but this is, this is where 
you might want to start doing some market research. Now, we provide a great amount of research. It's the embassies and consulates um, that are bringing this detailed information about your industry. It may be fashion, it may be irrigation, it could be just about any industry that we serve, and uh, we're going to have some information on there. So we have market intelligent reports. As you can see, uh, we have big shows coming up in Vegas with cosmetics. We have um, we have a big presence at such shows, uh, uh, and then I've heard, and like you can see there, France Organic Cosmetics. I think this is what's really important. I've learned some oh some interesting uh, tidbits about the cosmetic industry, and it's not as regulated as one would think. So we, we have to be careful of um, what products are put in there, and I know that. A lot of us are very concerned about making sure that we provide a safe and sane uh, product going out to the world. All right, if you get a hit on your website from some country that's offering you a pretty good sizable order and you don't know where they are, or you've never heard of anybody from that, uh, that particular country, we have what we call these country commercial guides. And this is a great place to start learning about that particular country. Uh, you would go to it, pull down that particular country, and you're going to find that the U.S. Department of State has input, the Department of Energy has input, the Department of Ag has input, the Department of Commerce, and there's quite a few others that are inputting into these commercial guides so you can understand some of the bigger industries that create their GDP and, and what's a good opportunity for U.S. companies. You will also find some trade associations in there that you may contact and work those channels as well. You're also going to find out what type of electricity they have, what, you know, what it takes to, uh, uh, to connect online. What are some of the impediments they have connecting online? And some do and some don't. So these are, this is a great guide. It doesn't cost you anything. You've already paid for it. Your tax dollars have already paid for all these market intelligent reports that are found in our market research library and along with the country commercial guide. So this is, again, if you get something on your website you don't know, it sounds like a good order, if you'd like to pursue it, I'm suggesting you should learn about their country. And then if you want to take the next step, then you, know, you can contact myself or anybody else that's in our agency across the country, and we'd be glad to help you out. Uh, we have 13 offices in California. I just have to be in the middle. Next slide, please. All right. Um, so we also have a nice little uh, um, uh, video resource. Uh, online and we have new to exports so traditionally about every year consistently uh, I about 25% of my clients are new to exports I work with them uh, yesterday I was working with a client for over an hour on specific letter of credit and they have a new technology and it's very exciting they're selling to a, uh, a foreign government and things get a little different there but uh, we're right there by their side, going over letters of credits, different payment methods, making sure that um, things are in their favor as much as possible. And um, so we work with new exports. And again, that's about 25% of my clientele will end up being uh, new to exports. Growing exporters um, and the experienced ones, that's the rest of my time dealing with them. And you would be amazed um, how many different things go right and then once it goes wrong, out there in the real world, things can happen. But along the way, we show you guys how to mitigate as much of the financial risks as possible. And the U.S. government does a great job providing assistance um, with exporting. There's various programs that help you tap into uh, extra capital, how to mitigate those foreign receivables, how, how, how to uh, uh, factor if you will, the uh, foreign receivable. So there's many different things that we have to help out, and this is a great spot to, to check those videos out and take quick courses. We also have online um, our basic guide to exporting. When I teach classes at the universities, this is one textbook that's really good. It'll serve you well. It has all the things in there to help you avoid the pitfalls, and at the same time, it's like less than $25. So it, I think the it uh, behooves you to go ahead and uh, purchase that one. And I keep one by my desk. So if a client calls and they have a specific question about something, we can just go to the same page and we can talk about it. Next page. All right. So um, we have uh, initiated the e-commerce um, uh, innovation lab. 
it is something that's very new to our uh, agency. And the e-commerce export resource center uh, is a place that you can find a lot of different information. And we have a couple of people that uh, specialize in this lab that will help you out. And I can help you, or you can go directly to them. Um, and if they're not, if they're not uh, responding to you, then you can come to me, and I'll be glad to help you get that response that you're looking for. But you know, they'll talk about uh, your, your your digital strategies, uh, some of the best practices. But what what do you need to ship your product, or how to get paid, or how to collect that payment, or mitigate those those financial uh, risks? And then also um, trying to find out what our analytics are telling us. What are some of the e-commerce tools that will help us? Um, the market intelligence reports and stuff like this. And then also providing um, webinars and events and maybe, um, again, providing that information out to the world so they can come back to you and, and purchase your products. Thank you, that was perfect, that was a good time. <laughs> okay, uh, this is a, um, a, a typical e-commerce country briefing. Uh, this one is with China, and as you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with China. Yes, tariffs have gone up. Yes, um, trade is going to drop, but not all of them. They're still going to be buying our products, and as you well know, we buy a lot of products from China that are made there. So it's still going to go on. It's going to change, but it's not going to drop off completely. So uh, stay the course, stay on the mission, and if you're finding that your prices are your product is being priced out of the market due to tariffs, come back to us. I, Give me a call. Let's see if we can sharpen that pencil and reduce some costs somewhere, some way to make your, your products more competitive in the marketplace. Um, in, in, in China, for example, we do have an overseas digital trade policy program. We actually have also an intellectual property rights attorney on staff at the embassy, and you can tap into that resource. We have a couple other intellectual property rights uh, lawyers uh, in other various marketplaces, not at, at every embassy, but at a few key ones that a major amount of business is going through. Um, also working with uh, the EU and the CC uh, e-marks and uh, things like this, and in China you get the CCC. So we can help you with that as well, make sure you're in compliance. If you are getting a, a, uh, a barrier to enter into a marketplace and you think it's unfair and unjust, and you find that you should be there, but they're just putting up a trade barrier, we have ways to help out with that. We have an actual advocacy center just to help out to make sure our clients go through that. Now, over the years, um, I get about two a year um, on advocacy, and, and those are clients here locally that I serve. So, and again, I'm in Central California. I don't nearly have as many as uh, Los Angeles or New York or something to this effect, but uh, we still get a couple a year because it's very important. All right. Um, we also have some briefings on what taxes and regulations that you'll need to comply with in China. So this is very important. And then um, I think one of the best ways to, and I've had really good success in the energy industry. Uh, we tried to do a water trade mission this year, but the, uh, uh, the, the lapse of appropriations with the government this year and the furlough of, of um, some of those employees, like myself, it just delayed too much time and we missed a, a beautiful window of opportunity. So we're going to try again next year. But the certified trade missions is one way to really get your products out there. We had a trade mission a few years back with renewable energy and energy efficiency. And we had some new technology. One company had some new technology. They had a very good existing um, product going out the door, served it well, but they have a new technology. And during this trade mission to Turkey, for example, we met with the Ministry of energy and his staff. And we got a briefing about their marketplace through their perspective. That was good. And then he asked, is, is it any questions that uh, any of you have? And one of my clients put up their hands and said, we have a new technology and we would like to see if you would be open uh, to providing a test ground so we can connect our new technology to the grid and see if it performs. And they granted permission to do so. So those are some opportunities that you just can't do by email. You really do still have to get up, shake those hands, and do business face-to-face -face eventually. But we certainly would we'd like to minimize as much travel as possible. Some of us probably want to travel more than others, but uh, my goals. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. So um, the last thing, too, 
uh, free trade agreements, if, if you get um, an inquiry from like Singapore, you should know that we have a, a trade agreement with Singapore. So the duties are lessened, right? Those tariffs are down. And so those duties, those taxes, if you will, are a lot less. Panama, Colombia, Peru, Chile, we have trade agreements with them. Israel is one of our oldest ones. Lots of, lots of technology going back and forth between us and Israel. They also have Morocco and Jordan. Um, and those are different places too. Australia, Korea, and and um, eventually there's there, this administration is currently working on with Japan to see if we can have a trade agreement with Japan. So look and see if we have a trade agreement. And this is a nice link here for you to click on there to see if your client who is importing about your product is in one of those um, countries that we have a free trade agreement. With. So that would be good. Slide. All right. Referral resources for the e-commerce and uh, the business service provider directory. All right. Um, uh, so, so on the uh, on you can actually uh, get your information on here. It's a res it's a referral resource. We have a link right here to export.gov. We do provide these links, um, and we have a special program that would help translate your homepage on your website to local language. There's a small fee for it and it sits on our website so you can direct people with the uh, that particular language back to our website and they do the translation for you. So the translation is done by a professional that's in your industry and you can get that uh, converted over and it's, it's a featured U.S. exporter uh, program that we have. It's, it's on our website. So if you can go to the Embassy websites from time to time and take a look at what they're offering. You'll see some some companies that are offering out there their products and whatnot. Okay, um, you got your um, cybersecurity, you got your logistics, legal and regulatory, online payments, and um, you know a lot of countries have the value added tax system. So uh, we're we're not as familiar with that as others are, but I strongly encourage you to understand how that works because every step of the way. There's a value uh, that is increased by taxation, and the next time it changes hands, it's going to get taxed again, and so again, the price is going to keep creeping up. So you really need to understand how that works and see if you can minimize some of the uh, transfers uh, of title of your product uh, exchanging hands. Okay, and then uh, lastly, the uh, e-commerce sales channels. Uh, you have some very specific channels, and you have your omni channels. And uh, you just need to kind of take a look at that. But if you can put all that in there, um, then, then uh, people are looking for different things like this can take a look on there. And they can find you and, um, and also help you out with the search engine optimization for, from a global perspective. Not just from a US perspective, but from a global perspective. There'll be some meta tags in there that you want to you wanna put in there that uh, maybe in local languages around the globe that you may know of. And uh, for something like that, I'm sure a simple uh, translation um, off the web work as well. But uh, this is something that we do offer. Okay, next slide. And then this is how you can get a hold of me. And these are some of the uh, links that we provide. A copy of this presentation is uh, going to be posted on the Blue Tech Valley for you to um, download. And that way you can use the live links. And then as we have a bit of time here, I'll be glad to take any questions. And if I don't know the answer, I'll be glad to go out and, and get the answer and respond to you. But uh, let's see if we have any questions right now. Yeah, I was really uh, impressed myself uh, doing some of the research for this presentation about the global app business. And I know, like, the, um, the agribusiness sector and all the different apps that are being developed, and some of them are very good and some of them are... Uh, very informational and some of them are just for like presenting all the data that they're collecting through sensors and just creating a more intuitive and, and easier format dashboard uh, for the farming operation or the, or the manager. And I, I, I wonder how much of it is app and then how much is it agribusiness because it seems like eventually it's going to be like two different industries. And, and yes, you can go out and hire an app developer to help you out with your app concept. but it's serving, it's always serving the industry. So I think there's always going to be a tie, but eventually um, it's going to be a different uh, different industry in and of itself. Um, any questions? Mm -hmm. okay. All right. 
Well, I, 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 uh, I hope you got some good information off of this uh, okay. webinar today. And the chief they ask, is your office in Fresno? Yes, the office is in Fresno. And uh, my local number is, uh, of course, area code 559-348-1398. We'll put you directly under my desk. We have offices in San Diego, Orange County, West LA, downtown Los Angeles. Uh, I cover Bakersfield, Fresno. We have an office in Sacramento. Um, San Jose is um, obviously our office there. It caters a lot towards the uh, Silicon Valley. And they would have probably made this presentation today, but they have some high level uh, visitors coming out from Washington, D.C. and other countries. And so they were quite busy with handling all that. And there's a lot of uh, logistics to handle such high level visits from overseas because they're usually a company with high, high level officials from Washington, D.C. But we asked them if they can do it. This, this particular time did not work out for them. But uh, so we have an office in San Francisco as well. Uh, North Bay, San Rafael area, Oakland, and so that's that's a quite a bit of a presence here in uh, California. So uh, our service area here covers about uh, 48,000 square miles from Kern County up to Stanislaus, Modesto area, and then from San Luis Obispo over to Nevada border. So quite a bit going on. Uh, I do get out into the territory, and it's one of the Best parts of the job actually is to is to go out and see your company and understand how it works because we often get trade leads. So please get in contact with us, uh, get involved. We do get active trade leads from around the globe in all different industries. And if I know um, your company, I've been there, and and I get a trade lead, and I oh that's applicable to to their 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 company. I immediately send it to you, and um, and then I go back and I have a, a little bit of a marketing list broken down by industries. I try to get people to trade leads out. So, uh, and those work out pretty well from time to time. We, we also have to get some qualified and uh, questions have to be exchanged before I send them out. But again, those trade leads are coming through our embassies and U.S. consulates, so they're usually screened and ready to go. Any other questions today? All right. Um, there's my email address, and nope, that's misspelled. Um, so it's glenn.roberts at trade.gov. I don't know where the I came from, <laughs> but um, glenn.roberts at trade.gov, and I'll be glad to answer your questions offline, and I will be back in the office here in about 20 minutes. So thank you very much for your time today. Any questions before I sign off? Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks again for your time today, and I hope uh, you got something out of this. And if you have any comments or feedback, please don't hesitate to give it to me. I'm always looking to improve personally, so uh, looking forward to hearing from you at your earliest convenience. Take care, and have a great day.